Hey guys, it's Stephen here, back with another video. It's the first episode of Five Things That We Learned in an awful long time because there's actual football again. And I know a lot of people like these videos, so I'm glad that people enjoy them. I'm glad also that the back of guests. Uh, hopefully you enjoy this episode of Five Things That We Learned from Manchester City's comprehensive 5-0 victory over Burnley. I guess the five things could just be the five goals, but I won't do that. I'm going to talk about uh, particular moments and all that kind of stuff from the game because there's lots of talking points um, and lots of fun talking points, really. I'm going to start initially... Um, with Phil Foden as a forward. Um, is Phil Foden a forward now? I mean, he's not, but could he be a forward? Basically, I'm saying this on the back of Guardiola's comments after the game. Uh, obviously, Phil Foden once again started on the left, and Guardiola said after the game that Phil can play anywhere uh, because he has an incredible sense of goal. Basically, Guardiola sounds like he's talking about uh, Phil Foden these days um, as a forward player as opposed to a midfielder. Now, I would say initially, I mean, things are temporary. Things can shift at any point. But at the moment, this feels like a very valid point to make because uh, Foden, uh, even though he's drifting around the pitch and getting involved here, there and everywhere, he's currently starting out wide as a winger and proving himself very useful because he has that um, very instinctive uh, ability to finish, basically. He's very good in and around the box. He's very good playing close to the goal because he can score goals, basically. I've said on Twitter plenty of times he's a 20-goal-a-season kind of player, and I stand by that. And everything I've seen over the past few days has only f further added weight to that statement because he's um, just a goal scorer. He's a natural goal scorer. Now, I don't think he's a natural left winger by any stretch of the imagination. Um, I don't think he can really beat a man and put a crossing that well on that side because that's a very uh, unique kind of skill set. I think he played better alongside Mendy if he was going to play on the left, whereas uh, Zinchenko is not that great at overlapping. Um, but he can play there and he can drift around and in a fluid Manchester City, he can be very useful. I still, however, do think that his long-term career um, will end up playing in the middle. But for now, as a young lad breaking in through the, into the team, um, it's a perfectly valid position for him to play. I think he'd be more effective maybe on the right, even being honest, cutting in with his right, uh, left foot, as we saw against Aston Villa quite a lot in the Carabao Cup final. But I'm fine with this. And I think Guardiola appreciates, appreciates his... Um is life a goal? Because having someone that intelligent who can recycle the ball well, who can also float around across the pitch and use his fluidity to be very useful uh, across that front line and also pose a goal for it and also play the passes, I think Guardiola appreciates that. Also, largely, he was fantastic. He's absolutely fantastic. So the more places we can squeeze him onto the pitch these days, uh, the better because Foden is um, he's, he's, he's happening. It's happening for him. Uh, he's definitely showing signs that he's ready for this team. The second thing I wanted to go through is just Mahrez once again. Uh, he was magical. Uh, he kind of he's scoring the kind of goal that only he really scores in this team at the moment. Um, that goal. Uh, when he just basically turned Burnley inside out, it was absolutely wonderful. Um, he even scored a penalty as well. All the penalty kind of woes have been washed away recently, and his personal penalty woes against Liverpool uh, uh, last year at some point. Um, is it last year or year before? I can't remember. I can't remember the dates anymore. Um, either way, that's been that's gone now, um, and it's good to see him confident again. It's good to see um, him looking part of this squad and showing what he can, be, he can be capable of. He can be very quiet for a while, Mares, but then he can do something like that where he can beat a couple of men and fire it into the bottom corner. And it's great having someone with that much, I guess, magic in his boots. Uh, Mares, I thought, was absolutely fantastic yesterday and he produced big moments. He linked up really well with Cancelo and he linked up well with Bernardo Silva and just looked like he's part of the squad like now entirely. And we know he is, but largely he's just, he's just comfortable now. It's great to see. Uh, the third point today, um, Bernardo in the middle. Um, central Bernardo is good Bernardo, isn't it? I think he can play on the right as well, but I think it's no coincidence that he had his best game in some time now. Um, I think he's had good games both on the right and the middle before, but he looked at home uh, yesterday. He was buzzing about, he was causing uh, Burnley all kinds of problems, and he was linking up very well uh, with Morris, as I've said before, and when he floated over to the left as well. I just liked his all-round game yesterday. Uh, Bernardo is a very intelligent footballer, a very likable footballer, and he could be the one, um, I guess, uh, that helps ease into some kind of post david Silver transition. It could be Phil Foden, but it could also be him. Uh, you know, another silver for a silver spot is absolutely perfect as far as I'm concerned. But Bernardo, I think it's fair to say, has had a pretty quiet season. He's not been anywhere near the heights of last year where he was sensational and one of the best players in the league. He hasn't been that this year for whatever reason. He's still been pretty good because he's Bernardo Silva. So even a 7 out of 10 Bernardo Silva is better than most football players. But just by his own glorious standard, it's not been quite as um, heady, I guess. He hasn't been at the same heights, which is a shame. But Bernardo yesterday, I thought, was really, really good. Um, and hopefully, maybe that enforced break has been something that he needed for some time. Bernardo's played a lot of football. So maybe this time to sit at home. Uh, well, not he went away, actually. He was in Portugal, wasn't he? Was he in Portugal? Either way, he's rested, he's recuperated. 
it could be exactly what Bernardo needed to get. Um, to find his true self, I guess, to find his old self that was so impressive last season. Either way, he was very, very good. Uh, very, a very good part um, of a very fluid kind of front line system yesterday with City looking very kind of versatile, and he was a big part of that. Um, fourth point, uh, that squad depth we've got is ridiculous. Um, I think it was it Sunes who said it or Matt Manorin. Someone said it on Sky last night that that's probably the strongest bench. It might have been Carragher or someone, I don't know. Uh, they said it's the strongest bench in Premier League history. Uh, the bench last night was just astonishingly good. And I think one thing we learned now with this five substitution thing is that we can literally just change a game by changing half our team and there'll all be world-class players. We're very lucky on this front. And this could benefit us more than basically anyone else. Um, we have the strongest squad in the league. Um... We've got a fully fit squad now, basically, as well, apart from a couple of injuries, actually, apart from a man we'll get onto in a minute in Aguero. Um, but we've got a big squad, and we look at the Burnley's bench yesterday, comparatively, they had to play kids on there and couldn't even fill nine, uh, nine slots on the bench. Whereas Manchester City don't have this problem at all. We've also got a bunch of uh, genuinely very exciting youngsters training with the first team if we need to fill that slot. There was no Stones uh, and can sorry, no Stones and Garcia in that squad either yesterday. Um, and no Bravo as well. I know Bravo's not quite the same, but you know what I'm saying? There's another player of, that would get onto the bench for most teams. Um, these three players weren't there. Then we've got the likes of uh, Tommy Doyle um, training as well with the first team. Uh, then we've got Cole Palmer, who seems to be turning a few heads, Felix Demetra. Um, we're very, very lucky. We're very, very lucky. And I think we could benefit more than most teams, even in the FA Cup and the Champions League, um, given the size of a squad we've got, given the substitution numbers these days. Uh, honestly, I think it could be uh, a bit of a game changer for us. It could see us go on to win a couple of more trophies. Um, well, maybe one at least, hopefully one at least, hopefully the FA Cup, and who knows with the Champions League, hey? but... It's a very good thing, and Manchester City probably benefited this from this more than anyone else, if I'm being honest, and I'm not going to complain. Finally, um, and I hate to say this because it's um, it's a big ask, but it's also framed around a negative. Uh, Aguero has been confirmed from a meniscus injury in his knee. He's going to be out for around five weeks, if not maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less. But either way, he's going to be out for at least a month, five weeks, um, which basically pushes him towards the latter end of the Champions League if we get there. And there's no doubt about it that losing someone like Sergio Aguero for that period of time is a big crushing blow for Manchester City. It's a huge blow. It's Sergio Aguero. It's um, uh, He's our top goal scorer, one of the best forwards in world football, and he's out now for five weeks. Um, it's worrying. It's a concern because we haven't got a backup striker, really, We've got, other than Gabriel Jesus. After Gabriel Jesus, we haven't got a striker, really. Uh, we haven't even got anyone training with the first team, I don't think, from the kids. Um... So that isn't good. That isn't good. I hope, fingers crossed, nothing happens to Gabriel Jesus because we would be a little bit screwed then. Um, but Aguero now, um, we know Aguero, this is a big chance for Gabriel Jesus. I think it's fair to say that Aguero's form hasn't been that great um, anyway this uh, last few, well, I guess the last few games, which is weird to say because it's months back. But this is a big chance for Gabriel Jesus just before the lockdown. Jesus had one of his best games in the Manchester City shirt, in my humble opinion. When against Real Madrid, he was absolutely spectacular. Um, he was everywhere. His work rate, he's intelligent. He even scored. Uh, he was very, very, very good that day. And now he's got a chance, really, in the running uh, towards the end of this season to establish himself potentially as our number one. He's actually played now one more minute or something like that than Aguero this season. So he's played more time with minutes, and he's about to play an awful lot more in general than Aguero. So... Um, I do have faith in Gabriel Jesus. I think he's an incredibly intelligent young player. I think he's got loads of potential. I don't think he's quite reached it yet, but I think largely he's an intelligent footballer and he's used to bearing the weight of other people on his shoulders. I'm not sure if you can hear the birds outside, by the way, but they're very loud. Sorry if you can. Um, they're tweeting away. Uh, but Gabriel Jesus is used to having a lot of expectations on his shoulders. Look what he did for Brazil. Look what he did for um, Palmeiras. Um, he's a young man with a, a lot of heart, a lot of courage, and I think he'll work incredibly hard for Manchester City. And this could be um, the making of him. This could be the moment where he really establishes himself as our first choice a striker and bags in a bunch of goals some of them important and he just rockets in belief in ability uh, and in confidence really um because he's got that ability to him he just needs to really show that he can do it now on a permanent basis and i don't see any reason why i can't because he has the talent but we'll see i guess uh guys there are the five things that i uh took from this game foden could be a forward now morris continues to be magic and settled into the squad bernardo looking great through the middle the squad depth is ridiculous and gabriel jesus can he be the man to step in sergio aguario's shoes uh also go check out the match reaction video last night there's a video coming later on with walter and alex from blooming rising that I recorded that i'll edit and put out later hope you enjoyed this video I love you all loads uh, and I'll see you very soon. Subscribe and all that kind of stuff in a bit.